Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are going to be talking about yet another tool that is looking to take our jobs. But today, it is voice actors that have to worry. Well, not quite worry yet, but they should start worrying, I suppose. In the world of machine learning and artificial intelligence, is intersecting with the world of game development more and more and more every day. Just recently on the channel, I covered a tool called Art Breeder, uh, which showed uh, basically creating concept art using um, GAN, or Generation Adversarial Network Machine Learning. And you see, all of these images were actually created by a computer. If you want to check that one out, I will link this in the linked article down below. So that was Art Breeder. That's the one that should get the artists a little bit afraid that the uh, the, pro the robots are coming for their jobs. And then we've got uh, GitHub launched Copilot. Now, they launched it poorly. Almost immediately, they got hit into a little bit of a scandal where they, it was caught just basically lifting code uh, that it didn't have a license for. Uh, but Copilot is basically artificial intelligence assisted coding. And it straight out just kind of reads your comments and guesses what kind of code you are trying to implement. And again, it's early and it's not something to be completely afraid of yet, but it's the beginning. So today now we're talking about voice acting. And what we have is a mod was released recently called A Night to Remember. Now A Night to Remember was actually the name of a trailer that was released like a, a spoiler or a teaser trailer for Witcher 3 way back in like 2015. Well, earlier this year, A Night to Remember was released for uh, The Witcher, A Wild Hunt. And normally I wouldn't talk about mods on this channel at all. They're not really that relevant. But this one is interesting because it is the first mod uh, that I know of that uses machine learning. Basically, uh, they take Geralt's, Geralt's voice. Geralt? Geralt. Geralt, Geralt, I think. Uh, they, they synthesize his voice by using a number of samples from uh, inside the game. So, for example, let's hear what he sounds like. come back for you one day you realize that right now it's not perfect but my goodness it's close enough and how did they go about uh getting his voice obviously they could have uh hired a voice actor to fake it or they could have hired the original actor but no what they did instead was used something called cyber voice now cyber voice is um nothing particularly new in some way voice synthesis has been with us for 20, 30, 50 years. It basically, since we had computers, we had computers trying to simulate voice. Something like text-to-speech, uh, it's always been around. But what this one enables you to do is basically create uh, voice simulations off of a number of different works. So what you do is you upload your voice patterns and it uh, creates it for you. Also, it actually gives the creators the ability to upload their voice to be licensed out. So we've got a couple of Russian voice actors that have actually uploaded their own thing. So here you can see a couple more examples. This is, again, uh, Geralt or Geralt. Hi. Hey, nice to meet you. I hope there are no monsters in the vicinity and we can chat quietly. This is a demonstration of cyber voice speech synthesis with the voice of some monster killer from some game where you need to kill monsters. Betty Butter bought some butter, but she said the butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. But it... This quote is from an article by VG247 about... A sword is a bladed... I don't know why it's scary. Melee weapon intended for cutting or thrusting that is longer than a knife or dagger. But there you go. It's again, you can tell that it's a computer. A blade attached to a hilt. But the it's precise definition of the term. Okay, shut up. Uh, but it's harder to determine simply because of the fact that it's been trained to sound like a specific voice. And that's where um, cyber voice is really kind of specific. You can literally upload uh, a number of like footprints that it's going to learn and create a voice from. Uh, so here, what they're pitching it towards is things like, and a lot of this obviously is uh, ESL type such setups that they're going for. So for example, if you're a, a non-English speaker or you're a heavily accented English speaker, speaker and you want to do uh, translations of your work into English, uh, you can use this service to basically create the voice for you. So you could do a voiceover for your YouTube channel. You can hook it into patrons for doing welcomes to patrons. Um, obviously, they're looking at uh, video game mods and indie games specifically. Uh, so if you wanted to have your voice actors in multiple different uh, languages, which is a, a coming soon kind of feature, uh, you've got that option there as well. So it's a localization tool. Uh, so here so you can download at 44.1 kilohertz wave files. There are a number of different plans out there. Uh, so from, uh, well, here, we'll go see the, all of them. Uh, $12 a month, you can get 10,000 symbols or words. 
Uh, voice over, t oh, sorry, uh, phonetics. I guess that's what you're dealing with there, not words. Or f uh, phenomes, is it? Uh, so voice over text, download the files, and you can use it commercially. And then you get into a number of different things. If you need more and more and more, it just basically goes up in price a little bit. Now, what I'm looking at today is the free version of it. It allows me to download uh, 5,000 symbols. Um, there's a number of voices available. I can't use this commercially and I can't download the audio, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So we got a number of different voice options out of the box. I actually find their trained voices kind of lousy other than ironically, the Russian voices. Um, so we've got Oliver, Adrian and Grayson and Madison here, male and female voices. And the ones that, uh, I actually think sound the best is actually Grayson because it's got a bit of a Scottish uh, accent on it and that hides a little bit of the computeriness. But now let's go ahead and we will do an example. So voice over text here, uh, we'll create a new project and let's go. So we start off, all you do is type out what you want to do. Hello, everyone, everybody. This is Mike at Game from Scratch. Now, you may have heard that once or twice. Uh, I don't know if I've ever said it on the channel, but it sounds a little bit familiar. And of course, it's me. So uh, I don't think, I don't think uh, full s slow speed makes a lot of sense. And we'll go ahead with the Grayson voice. Okay, so what we do once we're done, we'll go ahead and create that. You're going to notice here I have uh, 4,514 symbols in my free. So this is going to use up uh, 51 of them. So yeah, it is it is individual accents or phenomes. Uh, so it's gonna go ahead and generate that, upload it, there we go. So if you had the commercial license or whatever, you could go ahead and download the end result. So that's how you could create game um, uh, ready voice and dialogue. So let's go ahead and see what it sounds like. Hello everybody, this is Mike at Game From Scratch. So the there's a, there's a tang to it. There's definitely a bit of a tang to it. Also that was, I may be a little bit on the fast side here. So if we wanna tweak it, we can go ahead and tweak that out a bit and then generate again. So let's let's slow Grayson right down. So you see the speed in which it works. It's not so bad. Hello everybody. This is Mike at Game From Scratch. So the the beginning, the Hello everybody. This is Mike at Game From Scratch. The, the second part, this is Mike at Game From Scratch, sounds um natural. It sounds real, but the hello part Hello everybody, this is Mike at Game From Scratch. That sounds robotic, but for the most part, it sounds pretty solid. Now, if you come in here and you actually know uh, what uh, the various different phenomes sound like, you can actually tweak the sound. So if I wanted to do the hello, so let's take the hello, we're gonna grab the the H in the hello, and we'll put emphasis on it. Uh, so I don't I don't know how, like, this isn't a world where I work in, so I can't, here, I'll, I'll, I'll make it, I'll add an M in there. Let's see what that does. So go ahead and generate. So you can see how you could use up your uh, your symbols pretty fast with this experimentation, of course. So upload, generated, ready, here we go, and go. Hello, everybody. This is Mike at Game From Scratch. Yeah, so I definitely added a hmm after, there's an M now after the H. Hello, everybody. This is Mike at Game From Scratch. So you can sort of tweak it to however you, so that was what that was. So I can go ahead, I think I used the delete key to get rid of that. Oh. No, I don't actually know how to get rid of an emphasis. This gets rid of the entire thing, so I'm not sure how I would get rid of that. So we'll live with that for now. Uh, but we can also switch out to another voice. We'll go ahead with Oliver this time. Now let's generate that. Hello, everybody. This is Mike at Game From Scratch. No, that's still... All right, so we'll do a new project. We'll start that one from scratch. New project right here. This one we will use Oliver. This is a new project from scratch. Foliage, foliage. <laughs> I can't spell it either. All right, so let's, let's fix that one. Full time speed, all right, that's fine. We'll go ahead, synthesize that. This is a new project from scratch. Foliage, foliage, foliage. This is a new project from scratch. Foliage, foliage, foliage. So again, it still has a bit of that computer twinge to it, but it's not as obviously recognizable as it is sometimes. And if you'd gone ahead and actually um, trained your own voice, you send in samples uh, like what they did with Geralt. Geralt, Geralt, I think it's Geralt. I'll go with Geralt from now on. See if we can switch it to Madison or if I have to create a new project. So I think Madison is female. 
And... Done. This is a new project from scratch. Foliage, foliage, foliage. This is a new project from scratch. Foliage, foliage, foliage. It's, again, as far as text-to-speech voices go, it's pretty solid. Uh, but where it does get probably the most interesting is the area where I'm least likely to actually participate. What you could do here is basically provide a voice. You could send up a number of voices. Uh, you can, uh, so English. And I am not going to be doing so right now. Um, you can actually submit it out for other people to go ahead and license your voice if you wish. Uh, or you can have your voice up there. Now, I don't actually want my voice populated, even though I have easily done enough that people could take all the voices from my uh, videos, upload them out, and recreate my voice. No problem at all. Uh, and that's a little bit creepy, to be honest. And we come back here again. We've got, uh, there's the pricing structure. We've already seen this in action. So you've got uh, special pricing, standard pricing, and enterprise pricing available. If you do want to check this out, you can start it for, like, again, uh, free for 5,000 phenoms or uh, you know what I mean, 5,000 symbols. Um, and yeah, you can go from there. Now, one of the interesting things they've got going on is this guy right here. He is a professional dubber. He's done like Star Wars films and so on. Uh, he's made his voice available. So... Это демонстрация того, как звучит голос Андрея Зайцева. Это демонстрация того, как звучит so, голос Андрея Зайцева. If you're Зайцева. English dubbing over into Russian, you can actually use the voice of a professional Russian actor that has been machine trained into this. And you see, they've got a number of other voices that are like in the coming soon phase. And we got another Russian uh, voice actor, no samples available. So the other idea that they've got going on here is that the voice actors can actually make their voice available for licensing. And it's an interesting concept. I don't know where it's going to go. So if you're interested in learning more about the fellow, oh, it's not there right now. Uh, it's on the, their homepage. It's kind of got a bit of his bio and so on. You'll be able to license out other people's voices for use in your game. That's an interesting approach. It's going to be interesting to see where this ultimately all ends up. But yeah, so there you see, you can actually have voice rights and pay out royalties. And then here's this fellow so he's the actor from Jedi Knights, Anakin Skywalker. He did the Clone Wars. He voiced over for Star-Lord in the game um, and uh, Orlando Bloom and so on. So you can license these other people's works in the future as well, which is interesting. And it all kind of comes down to how much they sound like themselves. But, um, you know, a lot of indie titles, you don't even come close to having the budget for a voiceover cast. And if you can get the text-to-speech good enough that it doesn't sound like text-to-speech and you can have a number of different voices in your game, this is definitely a viable option going forward. And this is where artificial intelligence is heading. So, yep, programmers need to worry about their jobs in the future. Uh, artists need to worry about their jobs in the future. And it seems like voice actors need to worry about their jobs in the future. And this is going to open up a whole new legal um uh, minefield for sure it's sort of like now that we can recreate digital humans you kind of run into things like when does an actor own their face well now we're going to have when does an actor own their voice and in fact probably doing the voice is easier than uh, a digital likeness um so this is going to be a legal minefield going forward. Now, at the same time, at the end of the day, this stuff is all quite far away. Uh, you know, programmers aren't going to be replaced by robots anytime soon. Uh, artists aren't going to be replaced by, but what they're going to do is augment their workflow. So we're going to see more and more machine learning as part of it. Just as you still have uh, voice actors training voices like this to get the best results, we still have programmers working with these machine assisted tools and artists using it for concept designs but not for actual finished art. So we're going to see more and more machine learning in our daily life going forward. It's just inevitable. And this cyber voice is one step of that. What do you think of this? Let me know. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.